I'm Tyler Anderson and welcome to another episode of Skeeter School. In this video, you're gonna learn some of the tips that I use when I'm operating or maintaining my Skeeter boat. But be sure to read your owner's manual for a complete guide on operating and maintaining your Skeeter boat. So I can say that without a doubt, one of the most fun parts of owning a bass boat like this FXR here is getting the chance to compete in bass fishing tournaments. You know, I've been all around the country fishing bass tournaments and they are so much fun but something that can absolutely ruin your fishing day, both your mental state and potentially cause a physical threat, is improper tournament etiquette. You know, in fishing, the tournament etiquette rule really is just the golden rule. If you don't want an angler treating your fishing location or you as an angler uh, in a bad way, you probably shouldn't treat them in that way either. And so in this video, we're gonna talk about some of the common things you must do on the water when you encounter other anglers while fishing a bass tournament. My name is Tyler and welcome to Skeeter School. So first, let's talk about tournament morning blast off time. You know, launching early in the morning, a little bit of frost on your boat, a feel of 100 boats, smelling that two stroke smoke and hearing your name and your number get called. It's an amazing feeling, I'm telling you. But the one problem I see a lot of people make is that that excitement gets turned into speed, which gets turned into haste. And as my dad always told me growing up, haste makes waste. And so when you are launching your boat, take it slow. When you are trying to jockey for your spot in line for blast off, take it slow. And even when you get past that no wake zone, no, no wake buoy, and you can take off for the fishing day, still take it slow. Tournament morning does not have to be a race. As a matter of fact, it should never be a race. And I know that driving a Skeeter, it's a really fast boat. We wanna be able to go out there, pass people, get to our spots first. But I'm telling you, it's not worth it. So when you first get you know, out of the no wake zone area and you wanna pass the boat in front of you, let's say they're a slower boat, don't make the, the jump over their wake right away, getting, you know, cutting really close to them, because that puts yourself and them in danger. And if you're gonna pass any boats as you drive, you drive down the lake, make sure you pass them very wide, far away from them, never cutting any corners, because cutting corners, you could run, uh, you know, could run aground, hit your boat on a shallow point, or you could lose control uh, by, by jumping over a wave, hitting the bank, hitting a boat dock, or hitting another angler, which of course puts yourself in danger. Again, tournament etiquette and safety are linked hand to hand in this scenario. So if you get out of that no wake zone, you are clear to go, take it slow to get on plane because trust me, those fish are gonna be there if you get there 30 seconds early or not. Now when you're driving your boat, you never want to pass an angler within 100 feet on plane if possible. I know some situations that's not possible to do, but if you're on plane, you see an angler and you have to get close to him, go ahead and drop your boat off plane. Idle past that angler and then get back on plane to continue to your next fishing spot. That really is the best way to be most courteous to other anglers as you're navigating from spot to spot. Now when fishing shallow cover like boat docks, lay downs, shallow grass, it's inevitable that in a tournament you're going to run into a situation where you and another angler are fishing the same stretch and you're coming towards each other. So y'all have got to pass each other. What should you do? So should you stick your ground and stay where you're at or should you go around that angler? Well, if you, if, let's say fishing docks, if you can tell that you are fishing closer to the dock and they have been fishing farther away from the docks, at that point, you're basically fishing for different fish. He's fishing with the fish on the edge and you're going for the ones that are underneath closer to the bank. So you, you know, logistically should stick closer to the dock and kind of stick your ground as you keep going and that angler should go around you. But if you're both fishing the same way, let's you know, say you're both flipping laydowns, in my opinion, it's best to be the better angler and go around that person it's not worth it getting in a fight, so you may lose a few, you know, 10, 15 yards of fishing time to somebody else, but you will win in the game of courtesy. And when it comes to fishing offshore, I'm talking rock piles, brush piles, ledges, oftentimes anglers will share the exact same spot, but communication is key. You never wanna roll up to a spot, make a cast, only to find out that somebody else was already fishing that spot and that is not courteous at all. So let's say there's a brush pile up here off this point and somebody on that side is making a cast at it. I wanna make sure that when I drop my trolling motor, I ask them first, hey, are you fishing that brush pile right there? And if they say yes, it's just the best thing to do to be courteous and honor that they are already fishing that and to come back later. And one last situation is when you arrive to your next fishing spot like I am up here at the bank and somebody is already fishing at or close to your area. 
it is always best, like I've mentioned, to use your words, to communicate. Ask the person, hey, are you fishing here? Would you mind if I made a cast over here? Would you mind if I fished this specific dock over here? Most of the time, if you actually ask them, people are more than willing to let you fish right beside them, even in a tournament situation. It's when you have, you know, your, your own pride gets in the way and you want to weasel, weasel your boat in there and fish that spot. That's usually when an argument starts and trust me, you're going to catch more fish with your line in the water than with your words in the air. And you know, it's becoming apparent to me as I film this video that tournament fishing etiquette and fun fishing etiquette should technically be the exact same thing. There shouldn't be any difference there because if you want to be treated with respect on the water, you should treat others with respect regardless of if money is on the line or not. My name is Tyler. I hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you all next time right here on Skeeter School. Now when fishing, hit the boat dock. Good? Yeah. Cool, 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 cool.